Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about Ford Scan and your Ford Ranger. Adjusting the tire size, changing the splash screen. I'm going to try to help you guys uh, get everything set up uh, and configured uh, in a super easy way uh, on your Mac primarily if you're on a Windows laptop. It's going to be a little easier. There's just a few more steps to do if you're on a Macintosh. A lot of people say um, can't set up Forescan on a Mac. You have to run boot camp. Uh, while that's partially true, there's other ways around it and there's ways around it to do it for free without paying for a Windows license or getting anything else uh, extra. So let's go ahead and start with my setup. I have a 2021 model MacBook Air uh, with an M1 chip. Theoretically, any Mac will work, MacBook Pro. Um, there's just a few things that you need to do technically uh, to get Forescan working properly. Now, once you have your laptop, now this is gonna be different for a Windows laptop. It's gonna be a little bit easier. Uh, you'll just go to Forescan and download everything. But before we jump ahead to that, let me show you guys what you'll need. <clears throat> so on this MacBook Air, there are no USB ports. There are two uh, USB-C style Thunderbolt ports. So what you're gonna need is this type of connector, any type of USB-C to uh, USB type port. Uh, this is just uh, like a monitor dongle uh, that I was using a while back for one of my Windows laptops. Uh, but this will work. So this basically allows you to plug in the USB portion of your OBD2 cable. Uh, so this OBD connector uh, was provided to me by my buddy George Acosta. Uh, down in Florida, part of the Florida Ranger Group. So thanks for hooking me up with this. Um, this is a non-wireless version. So this is going to be, this video is going to be strictly talking about the wired version of this adapter. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description below uh, where you can buy this adapter itself. So once you have all three of these items, here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to go to your browser and then you're going to want to go to codeweavers.com slash crossover. I'm going to leave a link in the description below uh, to this and then you're going to want to download an app called crossover. There's a pay version and there's a free trial version. I just downloaded the crossover for Mac free trial. It's a 14 day trial. Uh, if you're wanting to make some adjustments, the 14 day trial is going to be good enough. Um, if you're wanting to continue to work with Forescan in the future, um, obviously you're going to have to pay for the full program. Now, once you have that program downloaded, you're going to go to Forescan.org and you're going to download, go to the products, and you're going to download Forescan for Windows version 2.3.4 uh, depending on when you're seeing this video it could be a different version so take that as you will uh, just download the latest version and then you're going to want to purchase an extended license uh one year three year five year lifelong uh it's up to you um i think there's ways to get the free two there's a way to do the free two month extended license trial um, but when it comes to software, these guys, it, it's good to support the developers. It's only 10 bucks for a year. Uh, shoot them $10, uh, get the one year license, uh, and it helps them out. They, they do a great job. So once you have your license code, you paid for your license, or you got your two month trial license, uh, download that. It's going to save your stuff. All right. So once you have crossover installed and you downloaded your copy of Forescan, now it's going to be an executable file. So it's going to be a .exe file. And if you're familiar with Macs and Windows, you can't run an .exe file from a Mac on OS X. And so you're going to install a Windows application, and then you're going to type in the application name. You're going to follow these steps. You're going to install the executable file that you downloaded through this method. Now, once it's installed, uh, it's going to give you this call, what's called a bottle, uh, and it's basically going to show you Forescan. Um, you're going to be able to open this Windows application natively in OS X. Um, it's emulated. I, I think it's running its own version of Wine. But either way, I'm trying to keep it non-technical. But once you have Forescan loaded, um, the problem that I encountered yesterday was uh, installing, plugging in a USB device uh, onto the Mac, the OBD uh, reader, Forescan, and crossover does not pick up 
uh, USB devices by default. So when you plug in a USB device, it's not like on native Windows where it's going to pick up the device and configure it and all that. So there's a little bit of an extra step that you need to do. You're going to open up a terminal in your Mac. And if you're not sure how to open up a terminal, you should just be able to go to Finder and then type in Terminal and then you're going to load it up. Okay, so once you get the application installed, you got Crossover set up uh, and you've got uh, Foreskan installed within Crossover, uh, you'll notice that when you plug in your USB device, uh, Crossover is not going to pick up on the adapter that you've plugged in. This is a step that you're not going to have to do if you're on a Windows machine because plugging in the USB device right into Windows, it's gonna pick up the device and it's gonna be able to start communicating with it. Uh, however, on the Mac, you're gonna to have to program crossover to work with uh, the USB device code uh, natively on your Mac. You're gonna to have to program that for uh, the emulation. CD into the dev directory. So you're gonna do CD slash dev. You're gonna run, and I'm gonna put these commands in the description below. You're gonna run ls, uh, greater than uh, slash disconnect dot text. Basically, that's going to pull your USB devices that are currently active or inactive, and then you're going to run the same command with the reconnect dot text. So it's going to push two different text files, and then you're going to run a diff on those two files. So uh, it should be able to pull up my two files from yesterday, and then it's going to pull up these two. Uh, USB devices. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the name of these two USB devices. You're going to make sure you're going to have that in the background, um, and then you're going to go to crossover, and then you're going to do a run command on the Forescan bottle. So you're going to run registry edit. So reg edit. You're going to run that. And it's basically going to pull up on that emulated version of Windows that's running somewhat natively in OS X. You're going to follow these directions um, in the description below. You're basically going to create a ports folder in the wine directory and you're going to label COM1 and COM2 and you're going to input the data keys uh, for the value of the data as the same as the ones that you pulled over in your native terminal on OS X. So once you do that, uh, you're going to save this registry file and then you're going to restart your Forescan on a crossover. So once you reboot that, you're pretty much ready to go and we're ready to go ahead and start um, modifying uh, certain things on the truck. Like I said, it might be, it might sound complicated, but it's really not. I'm gonna leave step-by-step -step links and descriptions um, on what to do uh, for, for you to set this up on your laptop. All right, so once you got your stuff set up on your Mac or your Windows laptop, you're gonna wanna take your device cables and walk over to the truck and park. It doesn't really matter uh, which setting this is on, uh, Forescan will tell you which uh, toggle switch to set it to. Um, so go ahead, plug that in. All right, make sure it's firmly in there. Uh, be careful with the OBD2 connector. Uh, most OBD2 connectors, especially the one on the Ranger, is going to be a plastic. So you don't want to bend any of the pins on there or damage anything. So be careful, just kind of plug it in and Go ahead and plug in your USB cable to the dongle. And then once it's plugged into the dongle, uh, you're gonna bypass that step if you're using a Windows laptop, and then you're gonna hop in. I should probably do a screen recording, uh, but just in the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna record uh, what I see on my screen. There's some steps you can skip as far as uh, if you're using Forescan on Windows, you're basically just going to open your Forescan app and not cross over. So let me go ahead and plug in the USB. And within Windows, it's going to open up an emulated version within 
uh, the wine environment. So you got your different toggles here. You've got uh, different things you can do. But for the sake of this, there's tons of Forescan videos on the internet. So I'm really just going to go into the basic stuff that you came here for is basically your tire size and uh, changing things like your splash screen and adding the off-road gauges onto uh, your your non-FX4 Ranger. Let's go ahead and connect to the vehicle. The little car icon with the eye, you're going to click on that and you're going to connect to the vehicle. It's going to prompt you. It's going to say make sure the ignition key is on. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Okay, you're going to hear the chimes. Uh, make sure it's in the HS scan position. So the toggle switch, go ahead and flip it to HS and make sure the vehicle's not moving. Obvious stuff, it's connecting. Uh, it's gonna tell you it's the Ford Ranger Courier Mazda B Series EcoBoost Gasoline Turbocharged Directed, blah, 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 blah. It's gonna show your VIN number and then you're gonna click yes. You're gonna load that selected profile and it's basically going to uh, load the different modules that are on your PCM. Uh, you're gonna use, the vehicle may contain MS scan modules. Basically, it'll prompt you if it needs you to hit that toggle switch, just click yes. Um, please set it to MS CAN bus selection, so flip the switch again, hit okay, and then it's gonna go through this little startup process. Uh, it's gonna find different DTCs, if there are any, it's gonna pick up everything on the computer. The little green icon says ready. So now you're ready to, let's go ahead and talk about your tire size. Uh, your tire size, click on configuration and programming. You're gonna go down to BCM, the body control modification. Uh, so you're not gonna want to click on the as-built format, you're gonna click on body CM module configuration and then click play. It's gonna load up all those blocks. Let it run through. And then you're gonna go down to, scroll down to uh, tire circumference. So right now mine is set to 2741 millimeters. You're gonna do that um, depending on your tire size. Mine is a 315.70.17. So I went to tire rack tire size calculator. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, type in your tire size and it's gonna give you your millimeters for your tire circumference. You're gonna double click that and you're gonna enter that millimeter value and then hit the check mark. I'm gonna click X here, uh, just because it's already been written to the uh, computer. Uh, and then when you're done, you're gonna hit right. And that right is basically saving it to the ECU. And then you're done. That is all you need to do to adjust the tire size on your 2019 and up Ford Ranger through Forescan. Um, there's other methods I think to do it, but this was the easiest. My, t my miles per hour were correct finally, uh, and everything was good to go. So the next thing, um, adding the off-road gauges. So here's a picture of the off-road gauges on my XLT. It is a non-FX4 package Ranger. Uh, it had no FX4 options, but you can add this off-road gauge set by doing the following. So you're gonna go back to configuration and programming and you're gonna go down to, uh, I think it's ACM, or go to down to, uh, IPC module configuration and then set it to MS CAN bus and then it is under off-road gauge and it gives you a zero or one binary value uh, zero is disabled one's enabled uh, you're gonna go ahead and click on enabled and I'm gonna exit out of this because it's already been written uh, and then you're gonna write that. Now, when you click write, it's going to, uh, here, I'll show you guys. Um, let me go ahead and, when you click write, it's gonna shut your gauges off and it's gonna do the reprogramming and then it's gonna show you the off-road gauges uh, on your profile. So that's, it's as simple as that. There's a lot of other options on here. Um, you can do Bambi modes, you can do, uh, you can disable a seatbelt chime. Uh, there's quite a lot here that you can adjust as far as um, 
what you can disable the the audio that comes through the speakers when you're accelerating. I don't really hear it anyways, but some people that do audio work and add a subwoofer, they will want to go ahead and remove this. So that's pretty much it. The hardest part, um, at least on the Mac, is getting the actual... So the hardest part on the Mac is getting the actual uh, USB device configured to work off of Forescan on the Mac. As you can see, I'm on a MacBook Air. Everything is working properly. Um, and there's a lot of great things you can do on this. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if there's anything else I can answer as far as configuration goes, just let me know. And, uh, yeah, uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions or need any help. Uh, but the process is the same with uh, Windows or the emulated 4Scan on the Mac. So, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.